Okay, so uh, I'm glad that all of you are hanging in there. Uh, just uh, a few hours uh, to go, but I uh, see your enthusiasm is uh, high as ever, so <laughs> it's a good sign. Uh, 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 so, uh, so, um, uh, uh, so last time, uh, uh, so we introduced these Mellon amplitudes uh, and in particular illustrated it for the four-point function. Uh, and I listed a set of properties, uh, the nice properties. Uh, so nice things about Mellon. Uh, I'll just sort of very uh, telegraphically uh, list them again, uh, and we'll see. So firstly was the fact that they are meromorphic. Uh, so, and then the poles uh, corresponded to uh, the dimensions of operators, actually something that's called twist, which I'll uh, 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 which I'll uh, uh, define, mention. The residues are factorized lower point functions. So, uh, so the metamorphic behavior, so this in fact uh, there were no branch cuts as I was uh, saying. Uh, then there's channel duality. Uh, uh, so this is the statement about, for instance, S and T interchange uh, um, <laughs> that you can uh, factorize things in. Uh, different channels. Uh, uh, and then uh, the other nice thing was that for large N CFTs, uh, double trace or multi-trace operators automatically included in the additional sort of gamma functions that were uh, in the definition, the gamma functions of the definition. And finally, the flat space limit, uh, more uniform in, in terms of these variables. So these were the uh, the, va the various uh, nice features. So this, in particular, these S I J literally went to actual P I dot P J. So real momenta, not the so real momenta that you label flat space scattering amplitudes by, not just uh, fictitious uh, momenta that we introduced. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, um, uh, it's sort of um, the the fact that we were writing SIJ in this form is uh, is uh, uh, is inspired by this fact. Okay. So, any questions about things we had seen so far? So now let me try to motivate some of these. I just listed these as I stated them. But actually, uh, these follow from the OPE. So all these nice features uh, essentially follow from the OPE. And let me try to uh, motivate that. Uh, and the more I'll motivate it mostly. So what I say here is sort of true for general Mellon amplitude for an endpoint function, uh, but I'll mostly focus on the four-point function, uh, as I said. Uh, uh, so, so if you are looking at, let's say, 
the original four point function. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so we uh, let's say take the S channel OPE, which means basically you are sort of uh, bringing together things one and two together, three and four. Uh, uh, so this is. This is not a Feynman diagram. This is just a, a mnemonic for the, uh, the order in which you are taking the OPE. You're bringing the points one and two together. You're bringing the points three and four together. It's just to sort of uh, show that. So this is what you call an S-channel OPE, uh, 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 because uh, that's the order in which you are taking things. Uh, 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 so you could have, of course, taken one and three together, uh, and uh, two and four together. That would be that would correspond to the T-channel OPE, uh, and similarly, there's a U-channel OPE. But uh, uh, let's focus on one channel. Uh, uh, so uh, so O delta one of x one, O delta two of x two, the OPE. So the OPE is, of course, an expansion, an operator identity uh, that holds in any correlator. Uh, uh, and uh, the nice thing about CFTs is that this uh, expansion is a convergent expansion. Uh, and uh, 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 so we can expand it in a set of operators. Uh, in, and uh, 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 so the coefficients, uh, are, so the expansion, you would have in general some spin L operator can enter into, uh, 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 into the expansion. Uh, 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 basically, even if the external operators are scalars because they're not sort of uh, uh, coincident, uh, uh, when you expand it, you can have all kinds of uh, uh, so spin or orbital momentum, angular momentum, if you wish. So, so you can have operators with spin L. So that's what these indices are. So you're bringing x1 close to x2. Uh, so, uh, uh, so of course, if you have some spin L operator, you need to have since our left-hand side is a scalar, you need to have uh, 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 the, the tensorial contraction uh, can only be with powers of uh, x12, with factors of x12 carrying these tensor indices. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, if we, if so the operator O itself can have uh, any uh, dimension. Uh, so let's say, let, let, let me actually denote it slightly differently. So you can have a primary operator O, uh, 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 dimension delta, but you can also have uh, descendants, uh, which involve scalar del squared to the n uh, acting on uh, those primaries. Uh, sorry? Slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. So you can have uh, C12 uh, is a so-called OPE coefficient. Uh, it's labeled by the dimension and uh, uh, this uh, the number of derivatives, which is a measure of the descendants. Remember, the momentum uh, acts on a primary uh, and generates descendant operators. So you can have del squared to the n. And then you can, the operator, uh, uh, can carry uh, uh, some spin, and uh, uh, and uh, these uh, are the uh, uh, these are just the uh, uh, the separations x one uh, uh, x one two, uh, which uh, you need l factors of these to soak up those indices. 
Uh, and then by purely by dimensional analysis, uh, uh, we need to have uh, so uh, we need to have some number of powers of uh, x12 square, uh, and uh, you can see what. Uh, uh, so c12 are dimensionless coefficients; they just measure the sort of effectively from the three-point function uh, of um, uh, of this operator, uh, these three operators. As I, as you have seen, the three-point function is just characterized by a number in a CFT. So this is that number, uh, um, and. Uh, uh, so, so the x12 square uh, uh, by dimensional analysis comes with a power. So the left-hand side has a scaling dimension of delta 1 plus delta 2 under the overall scaling uh, uh, transformation. Uh, so the right-hand side must have the uh, same uh, as well. This operator has dimension delta, uh, and uh, uh, then there are additional factors of 2n, uh, 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 and finally the x12. So, uh, so if you just match the, the scaling behavior, what you find is uh, that you have delta 1 plus delta 2 plus uh, minus delta plus minus 2n plus l. So you see uh, this has dimension delta. Uh, so when I when we say scaling it means so this has this goes like lambda to the power um, minus delta one plus delta two so uh, so or, or if you wish the uh, the mass dimension is delta one plus delta two so here you this factor takes into account that but then there are you need x one two to the l to compensate for this you need uh, to uh, the 2n to compensate for this, and the delta for this. So that's where uh, uh, these powers come. Uh, um, so, so that's uh, the uh, uh, that's the sort of the general form uh, uh, of the expansion. Uh, and uh, uh, and remember what we uh, discussed uh, right at the beginning when we introduced the Mellin transform. The Mellin the nice thing about the Mellin transform is that it picks out the powers, uh, um, the powers that in a power law expansion, it's precise. It, it, the, the poles of the Mellin amplitude pick out uh, the different uh, scaling powers. So, so if you compare with the definition that I gave for M of ST, so M of ST. Remember, there was it was something like dt ds u to the s over two v to the minus s plus t over two, and then various gamma functions. Uh, that was the uh, uh, the thing where u was essentially x one two square x three four square uh, uh, um, uh, divided by some denominator. Uh, but you see, u is the thing that's going to zero in this S-channel expansion when uh, uh, x1 is going to x2. So, we'll, uh, uh, so we see that uh, uh, the powers of u uh, are essentially the powers of x1, 2 square that you, uh, so in the, the S variable will have poles. Uh, so you'll get a sum of contributions. So when you do the sort of, uh, oh, uh, m of st was, was here, and this was the, the position space amplitude. So to, to get the, the power law behavior uh, of, uh, uh, there was all, also this additional factors of x12 square and all other, there were some these delta ij factors. I'm not going to write them all out, but um, uh, no. So a of uv was after we stripped off all that. That's that's the part uh, after the. Uh, that's the one that depends purely on the cross ratio. So there, there's no such factor. Um, uh, but if you compare this with the uh, with the pole behavior or with the uh, power law behavior over here, uh, that would be reproduced if m of st. 
uh, would, would uh, have poles in S, uh, which are at these values. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, the delta 1 plus delta 2, if you go back to uh, your notes from yesterday, you'll see that the, this piece was just a trivial uh, overall fa uh, piece, which was, uh, which was there in the amplitude, uh, 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 the overall definition of the amplitude. Uh, uh, so the non-trivial piece, uh, which depends on delta and n, the particular pieces, is, is this. So you, uh, so you get a uh, pole um, at each of these values corresponding to operators that are present in the OPE of delta 1 and delta 2. And, uh, uh, and, the, uh, and the residue will be, of course, uh, we'll say something about the residue later, but right now it will be some function of t, uh, uh, which will generally depend uh, on n. So you can sort of write the uh, uh, behavior of uh, M of ST in this way. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so each of these terms in the OPE, so this is a discrete sum. So that's why you get sort of a discrete sum of poles. So that's why uh, it's meromorphic. Uh, so, uh, and sum of simple poles. Uh, and in fact, uh, you, uh, they are all simple poles. They, you can't have double poles because if you had double poles, if uh, 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 in this expansion you would get log terms. Uh, uh, in uh, so you you can see that if I had a piece which was one over s minus some constant square, uh, and then you were to do this uh, u integral, uh, I, I mean the s integral. Uh, then at the double pole, you will pick up uh, terms which involve u to some power times a log uh, piece, uh, uh, just from the, uh, uh, the usual thing about the, the double pole uh, uh, when you evaluate the sort of the uh, uh, Cauchy integral. Uh, so, uh, so you get some of simple poles, uh, uh, so that's sort of uh, the first thing, there are no branch cuts because uh, no, no branch cuts because the spectrum is discrete. Operators delta n, uh, one second, uh, is discrete. Uh, so in the OPE, you don't have a continuum of operators appearing. You get a discrete uh, set of operators. So, uh, so there's no branch cut. You would get a branch cut only if there were a continuum in the sum. Yeah. yeah. Only if the poles are sort of accumulating. Uh, uh, but here, they're always discrete. Uh, so the, uh, at least, okay, I don't know if there's any proof of the statement, but I think in any quantum field theory, you don't have accumulation point of dimensions of operators. No, I think in a general, uh, uh, this thing. so you get, of course, infinite series. I mean, there's, of course, these, which are discreetly spaced by one unit, but even these, the delta uh, uh, in, a, in a CFT in dimension greater than two, in two dimensions, of course, you have continuous uh, uh, dimension, spectrum of dimensions, but uh, in higher than two dimensions, there's typically, there's no accumulation point, I think, of the spectrum is always sort of. The sum is infinite. There are infinite number of delta, but there's no branch cut. That's all I'm saying. You can have an infinite set of sequence of poles, but um, 
Okay, uh, well, uh, then maybe meromorphic is not the right word. Uh, uh, like a gamma function, would you call it meromorphic or not? Uh, 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 I, I th it's sort of like a gamma function. It has uh, a, a set of poles. Of course, gamma function has some exponential singularities, which this doesn't have. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's in the same sense. Uh, so maybe holomorphic with uh, an infinite sequence of uh, poles. Uh, uh, it's also true that uh, if you want to, I said over here, the flat space limit is more uniform. In flat space, when you take the limit, you get branch cuts. So flat space S matrices, of course, have branch cuts. And that you can see when you go to very, you have to take a certain scaling limit, and then the poles start sort of coalescing and then you form, you get branch cuts. Uh, uh, so in a, if you try to take the flat space limit, that's a somewhat singular limit in which, uh, uh, in which many of these poles can coalesce to form a branch cut. Uh, but away from that, it's sort of just a um, set of simple poles. Uh, okay, so, so it's meromorphic. There are no branch cuts. Uh, because the spectrum is discrete. Uh, and then, uh, um, okay, so the poles, so the location of the poles, uh, poles at not quite what I wrote dimension, that's why I wanted to qualify it by this thing called twist. Uh, so, In the dual theory, yeah, in a ADS, when, uh, in a large N, large coupling theory, which has an ADS gravity limit, and you take the flat space limit, then, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, flat space limit is more uniform, is what I said in, this, in these variables, uh, meaning the, uh, this Mellon amplitude goes over to the flat space S matrix, uh, in the, by taking an appropriate scaling limit. It's more uniform. There's a simple transform between the two. So, um, so the location of the poles uh, by this argument, by just this scaling behavior, are, are at, uh, at these values. Uh, and uh, this delta minus L, which is the dimension minus the spin, uh, the dimension of the primary uh, minus its spin. This is sometimes called the twist. This is an old notation, I think, going back to Gross and Treeman. Uh, 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 but someone, some young student asked me today, is it anything to do with uh, twist, topological twisting? So I think it's a matter of how far our field has gone that when you think of twist, you think of topological twisting or, uh, I don't know, twisted boundary conditions or something like that. But this twist has nothing to do with that. Uh, uh, it, it's just, uh, I don't know exactly uh, the, the thing of the uh, origin of the term, uh, but I think it was Gross and Treeman who first introduced this in the context of deep inelastic scattering uh, in uh, QCD. Uh, so, uh, so the light cone, if you consider the light cone OPE in a general quantum field theory, it's organized in terms of operators of twist, uh, higher and higher twist. So, um, sorry? The gamma functions will have poles. Uh, so those are the less interesting poles, at least for large end CFTs. That's what uh, I was saying over here, that those, I'll come to that uh, when I come to point number five. Um, the multi-trace operators, those will just correspond to multi-trace operators. So those poles will be, so these are, if you wish, uh, the poles of the single trace. Uh, uh, so we'll, uh, the, in this expansion, there are these plus multi-trace. Okay, let me make a distinction. Uh, so the, these are, these are single trace operators. Uh, uh, and then there can be multi-trace operators. Multi-trace, I mean, in the OPE of O delta one, O delta two, I will have things like O delta one, many derivatives, O delta two. 
that is also going to be present in the OPE uh, because uh, it just has the same quantum numbers and everything. So I, uh, so this operator, it's, a, uh, it's built out of two of these single trace operators, single trace primaries, uh, but it's, a, it's what is called the double trace operator. So, um, uh, so let's say in this particular case uh, for a four point function, essentially double trace operators like this uh, uh, can also appear. Uh, but uh, I will come, as I said, those will uh, be taken into account at least for large and CFTs by, uh, by, um, uh, by the additional gamma functions that are there over here. So that's why that's the nice thing about uh, this Mellin amplitude that this piece captures the single trace uh, uh, the contribution of the single trace operators, which for a string theory are the, correspond to the single particle state. So the, uh, you don't have to worry about the contamination uh, between uh, single and multi-particle states, uh, at least in a perturbative string theory or a large end CFT. Uh, not, I don't think in a general abstract CFT you have a flat space limit. It's, uh, firstly, it has to be a large end CFT, but let's suppose that those conditions are met, that there's some factorization and so on. But uh, I, I, the la a flat space limit uh, basically exists if the dual ADS uh, has a radius which is an uh, adjustable parameter so that you can consider... Uh, um, particles which are uh, much more energetic than the ADS scale so that they are, they are insensitive to the ADS uh, uh, curvature. Uh, so effectively, you need a Toft coupling, which is large. So you need a parameter, one parameter family of CFTs in which you can take a strong coupling limit. Uh, uh, I, I think only for, so these are, uh, so all, so if you wish, the properties listed here are sort of more general, but here you need large n. Here you need large n plus large Toft coupling. So in, in the cases where you have this, then you can take, uh, 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 in these cases, you can take a flat space limit uh, and uh, 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 and then what I said there is true. Yes. The poles, uh, of course, yeah. The value of the poles depend on the uh, on the coupling uh, because the delta, you know, in interacting theory, depends on the coupling. Uh, so. Um, we are, uh, to go be near flat space, you are taking that coupling very large. Uh, and uh, uh, so, yeah, there will be a dependence on the coupling. Uh, and so the location of the poles will, will be uh, sensitive to that. And that's why, as uh, I was answering earlier, uh, you can have the phenomenon in the strong coupling limit that many of the poles start coming together, and that's when you can form a branch cut. Uh, uh, um, because the dimensions are sensitive, and in the strong coupling limit, you can sort of have a coalescence. Uh, uh, but that's in a sort of a singular limit or an extreme limit uh, that that happens. For finite coupling, uh, uh, typically discrete. OK. so. Uh, uh, so the poles are at these values, uh, so it depends on the twist, and this is the descendants, the contribution of the descendants. Um, and um, uh, so there's an infinite sequence of poles. For each delta, there's an infinite sequence. It may, of course, happen that the residue vanishes or something, uh, in, and in uh, some of the ADS computations that happens, but typically that requires delta to be uh, an integer or something like that. Um, any case, uh, uh, so, so infinite number of poles, so, uh, um, so there are descendant poles, 
uh, labeled by n uh, for each primary delta, a single trace primary. Uh, and that's what. Uh, uh, so you have a, uh, and in fact the residues. Add, I, I'll say something about the residues uh, uh, soon. But uh, uh, um, so this is about the poles. Uh, so I told you about these two. So let me say something about the residues. Um, so uh, uh, so I, I took over here. O1, O2, and I wrote down this expansion. If I take O3 and O4, uh, I'll have a similar expansion. And then, uh, 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 so you can imagine uh, another sequence uh, of, uh, 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 of uh, 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 operators. But uh, then, it redu then this four-point function reduces to a two-point function uh, of the two sets of operators. Uh, now, you normally choose the basis of your primary such that uh, the two-point function is diagonal. Uh, 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 it, it, so so there will be a non-zero contribution only when you get uh, 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 when the same operators appear uh, uh, on, uh, uh, from, from the two OPs. So, uh, so they, there will be, so the, the factorization, so the OPE, Will sort of OPE factorizes uh, into something like C12 delta n. So you get, uh, uh, so, well, I should say the four point function factorizes factorizes into something like this. And then some contribution from the, uh, and then r roughly speaking, it's the O delta N two point function. Uh, and so this is just a schematic thing, and then there'll be the corresponding x12 square to some power x34 square some power, which is the piece that gives you the cross ratio. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so the full four point function uh, will factorize because of the OPE into something like this. So that will translate into the statement about, um, so in addition to the poles, uh, we can uh, talk about, so the poles come from this power law behavior, that's what it picks out. But this numerator piece is what will go into the residue. Uh, and uh, from this, we can say something about the, uh, that residue, I'll, which I'll just state. But before that, there was a question. Yeah, it's a matter of choice what you ca uh, call it. Yeah, I've, there can be descendants which are just purely derivatives, but I've sort of included them here. Uh, and so you can have del mu 1 del mu 2 of O, mu 1, mu 2, mu L minus 2, uh, 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 things like that. But I've sort of included them over here. But yeah, you could consider descendants uh, uh, having spin. But, uh, but it doesn't affect anything uh, that I've said over here. Yeah, uh, so, so, so then, of course, you, it will depend on what you call as delta. So, so in this difference, they cancel out. OK, so, so because of this OPE, uh, so yeah, by the way, yeah, since you people have had a course in, uh, in, in the bootstrap, let me write it in a way which is uh, probably more familiar to you. Uh, You have seen this conformal block decomposition. Uh, uh, so this is another way to uh, uh, to write this. Uh, um, uh, so here, uh, 
and the, and so this is the, these are the conformal blocks. Uh, which include the sum, uh, so here there's a sum only over delta. Uh, it, this includes all the, the sum over n piece, uh, so you can split up this delta n sum into a sum over delta, and the sum over n, uh, and uh, essentially uh, because uh, the contribution of the descendants is determined by that of the primary, you can sort of pull out the primary contribution uh, the three-point function out, and then there is this kinematic piece. So this, remember, is kinematic. It just depends on the conformal symmetry. Uh, so that's another way to, uh, uh, to say this. Uh, uh, so the main point is that you can factorize the four-point function using the OPE into sort of three-point functions, two sets of three-point functions. and. Uh, uh, and this translates, so this factorization uh, yeah, in uh, Mellin space, this translates in Mellin space to the fact that the M of ST we can write as Uh, there will be these numbers, C1, 2, delta, for, uh, 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 for all these. And uh, well, it, I'll write it in a particular way. So by the way, this twist is sometimes denoted by tau. Uh, uh, So, so you can write it in, uh, so this part is just the familiar part that is coming from here, uh, but these, uh, these uh, uh, conformal blocks, the G delta L of UV uh, has an expansion in, uh, in, uh, in terms of, in powers of U, uh, something like U to the uh, delta by two, or more generally U to the tau delta by two uh, uh, times a power series. Which comes from the descendants. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so basically this, so I talked about the U piece, uh, the U piece, uh, the picking up the scalings and U gave you these poles. Uh, but then there's the T integral, uh, and that's essentially coming uh, from the functional dependence on B, which translates into a certain set. Uh, so, the, uh, so these, uh, these are no, the, remember this is a kinematical thing. This is what Slava Rychkov uh, probably told you uh, about. These are known polynomials, um, uh, known uh, functions. Uh, and you can make an expansion uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, a known set of functions like this. Uh, and this, um, this GN of V, if you look at its corresponding Mellon transform, there are a set of polynomials. So these are actually some set of orthogonal polynomials. Uh, 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 which start with t to the j uh, plus lower order terms. Uh, so it's a polynomial of degree j, uh, but of course it's, uh, there's a family of them labeled by n. Uh, so for different n there are, uh, uh, so when n is equal to zero, the simplest case of the primary, uh, they, they are what are called Han polynomials. Uh, uh, any case there are things that uh, uh, mathematicians uh, ha have studied a bit. Uh, and so they're a fairly explicit set of polynomials. Uh, uh, and the nice thing is that they sort of start with uh, t to the spin. Uh, oh, this j is basically the L. Uh, uh, yeah, so j is the L of the, uh, uh, so this is t to the L. Uh, 
so it's the spin of the uh, uh, of the uh, particle or the operator that is being exchanged. So th this is why. Uh, so you have a delta and L being exchanged in the one, two, three, four uh, in this channel, uh, and, uh, 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 and so you get uh, uh, so this OPE uh, um, uh, in this S channel uh, in this S channel uh, can be written as a sum like this. This is very much like what you would do in momentum space. So if you had a momentum space amplitude. Uh, uh, and like you heard from Nima uh, in the morning, uh, when you go sort of near a pole of an intermediate uh, state, uh, so if the S-channel um, momentum, which is P1 plus P2 square, uh, approaches some, uh, uh, some physical value, uh, then you get a pole, and the residue of the pole factorizes Exactly in like in momentum space, you see here uh, uh, the factorization, uh, and uh, in fact, the, uh, this polynomial is the analog of the Legendre polynomials P L of T uh, uh, in flat space scattering uh, of uh, flat space scattering amplitudes. So, uh, so there, if you had an intermediate particle uh, of spin L, you would again get a polynomial uh, in the residue uh, of degree L in the T variable. Uh, and uh, in that particular case, again, it's kinematic, and it is just a Legendre polynomial. Uh, but here, it's a more, uh, it's a different set of polynomials. Uh, which, again, in an appropriate flat space limit, go over to the Legendre polynomials. Uh, so, uh, so it's a sort of a deformation away from the flat space uh, case. Uh, but uh, this is to show uh, mm, mm, that the structure is very parallel to what you have in the flat space. Uh, except that it's in terms of not... Uh, actual momenta or uh, momentum space, but in terms of this S and T uh, uh, variables which are playing the same role. Okay, so any questions? Yeah. You will, so this will be at say X2, this will be at X3, is that what you mean? No, no, sorry, what? Uh, uh, oh uh, no! So you you for uh, for the, uh, the the two point function uh, uh, has to be diagonal in the uh, uh, the two point function has to be diagonal in the uh, um, uh, in the operator. So it's sort of a, the basis that you have chosen, so, uh, such that it is uh, uh, it's it's purely diagonal. So that uh, is something the. Uh, conformal invariance tell, uh, uh, requires. So, um, uh, uh, so any case, uh, uh, coming to uh, coming to. So this is the statement about the residues factorizing into lower point correlators. In this particular case, it is just the three point. So these are the three point functions, of course. Uh, uh, so, uh, so it factorizes into three point functions. Uh, the, uh, so this side, this side, and then there's a sort of a propagator from here, uh, um, uh, which is uh, which is this piece. Uh, um, so that's, uh, as I said, very much like in momentum space. More generally, if I consider the Mellin endpoint amplitude, just like. In momentum space, also you have a similar factorization into sort of n minus k uh, or n minus k plus one points and k plus one points, uh, uh, like Nima again drew the same sort of diagram. Uh, you you have many things that sort of factorizes into uh, the sort of diagram that he was drawing. 
so, uh, so you, you will have this general factorization uh, uh, for uh, general Mellin endpoint function. Uh, okay, so, so that's uh, about factorization. And then uh, channel duality, in a sense, is quite trivial uh, uh, because it's, uh, it's just the SNT exchange when you, uh, and so here I did the OPE in this way, but the OPE is associative. Uh, and so whether I expand it in the S channel like this, I could have uh, instead done uh, 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 OPE in this channel. So that would just correspond to uh, exchanging another set of operators here. So the statement about uh, the associativity of the OPE, uh, meaning that you can do it in either order, and the final answer is the same, is the statement that this M of ST, uh, uh, you can expand it. Uh, alternatively, you can expand it in terms of poles in the T channel. So there'll be, again, a set of poles. Those will correspond to the operators that exist in the OPE of delta 1 with delta 3, and um, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so here you have 1, 3, 2, 4, and, and there'll be some other set of maybe delta prime or an L uh, uh, exchanged over there, uh, but uh, the whole amplitude, uh, especially when you have, uh, 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 supposing the external particle, uh, external operators were the same, uh, then there will have to be a symmetry under the exchange of T and S, and more generally, S, T, and U. Uh, so, uh, so that is the statement of channel duality, uh, which is uh, uh, quite uh, simple. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, so then the, uh, the additional uh, points, which are to do with large N CFTs, I'll just say uh, uh, just a couple of words. Uh, if you remember, uh, if you go back to the expression uh, I wrote down, uh, involve, so these gamma functions, let me just write down uh, some of them. In terms of this S and T variable, we had uh, delta 1 plus delta 2 minus S by 2. Uh, we had gamma of delta 3 plus delta 4 minus s by 2, and similar ones uh, with t. Uh, um, so in the t variable, it was uh, something like delta 1 plus delta 3 minus t by 2, gamma of delta 2 plus delta 4 minus t by 2. And then there, was, there were two more gamma functions involving effectively s plus t. Uh, uh, but what I want to point out is that, as someone said, that there are poles here as well. Uh, uh, so these, uh, the additional, the extra gamma functions have poles uh, at, for instance, delta 1 plus delta 2 minus s by 2 equal to n, which is a positive uh, non, uh, uh, this equal to minus n uh, uh, with n greater than or equal to zero. So in other words, s is equal to um, delta one plus delta two plus two n with n greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and so there are poles uh, at this value. Then the other gamma function are also at s equal to delta 3 plus delta 4 plus 2n. Uh, and then in the t channel, you'll get uh, t channel, you get uh, t equal to delta 1 plus delta 3 plus 2n, uh, et cetera. So there are all these additional poles in these extra gamma function factors, uh, which were sort of introduced uh, as part of the definition. But we see that these are uh, very useful to sort of uh, pull out these uh, these additional poles um, because firstly uh, they 
they, uh, they, uh, they are exactly in sort of agreement with the kind of poles you would expect for these double trace operators because by the same sort of argument, uh, they, uh, in the OPE, they are definitely there and they uh, will have dimensions delta one plus delta two plus two N. You can have again derivatives over here. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the nice thing is, um, uh, so this will be their dimensions in a large N, C N, in a large N CFT. Uh, the O delta one, let's say del square n O delta two, uh, have dimensions uh, delta one plus delta two plus two n plus one over n corrections. Uh, uh, so the uh, so the uh, so that's the statement about the large n theory that these operators. Uh, uh, the anomalous dimensions are suppressed. Uh, um, so, the, uh, so, so we see that these uh, uh, are the right candidates. And in fact, their OPE coefficients are also determined in terms of in uh, uh, they are sort of, uh, uh, they are fixed. Uh, 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 so their OP coefficients, again, at large n, uh, are also determined in a way kinematically, I should say, because it's sort of the, uh, um, we are considering O1, O2, and then this sort of O1 delta the 2n, O2, and, and, uh, and they are just basically determined by, so the three-point function of this is basically set of two-point function. Uh, 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 so, uh, so the OPE, so that's what is reflected in the gamma functions. In the gamma functions, uh, uh, the poles uh, all have the same residue. That's one of the things you learn about the gamma function, right? And the gamma function, gamma of x is basically something like one over x plus n, n greater than or equal to zero, uh, uh, plus maybe whatever. Uh, uh, so there's a, uh, um, uh, the, the poles all have the same residue, uh, uh, and that's uh, consistent in the large n with the fact that uh, uh, that basically you will get the same, uh, they're all, all the residues are uh, uh, simply proportional uh, uh, to each other. And uh, uh, so, so these gamma functions play a very nice role. As I said, you can sort of uh, forget about by including them in this definition. When you look at M of ST, you need to only focus on the single trace operators, which is very nice when you're trying to make a connection with the dual string theory, because then you can try to connect it with the single string scattering amplitudes. Um, so, okay, so uh, I think I'm quite sort of behind um, my, this thing. Uh, so what I want to do, uh, so these were uh, about the flat space limit, well, um, uh, uh, it's probably, uh, I'll, I'll refer you to the paper of Penedonis, uh, 2008, uh, uh, where he sort of talked about the uh, flat space limit. Um, I won't, um, it, uh, I won't say more, uh, more about that now, uh, but it's, I think, one of the nice features also of the Mellon amplitude. So what I want to do next is to just show you uh, a contrast, a couple of uh, sample computations uh, in, uh, in uh, perturbative CFTs uh, and in ADS, and they're sort of similar and different in, in uh, some ways, but uh, so I'll do that probably, I'll start on that next time, but let me just uh, 
make some So uh, so so all these were sort of general facts that I told you. Uh, it would be nice to see how these amplitudes actually look in specific cases. Uh, 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 so uh, so there are two specific cases. I will say I, I I won't be able to describe in detail, but I'll. In the last lecture, I'll just uh, show you some of the re explicit results. Uh, uh, so the other one is in ADS gravity. Uh, um, so, uh, so these are, if you wish, the weak coupling, and this is sort of the strong coupling CFTs. Uh, 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 so, uh, 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 so the uh, the amplitudes will look uh, 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 they, of course the weak coupling one you would try to analyze by sort of Feynman diagram like techniques and this one, the strong coupling you would uh, look at the Feynman diagrams in ADS which are what are called these Witten diagrams uh, and so, so both of these uh, limits you can try to explicitly uh, uh, look at a set of diagrams involving the four-point function. So for, or in, a, in a perturbative CFT, we'll look at some tree diagrams like this. And uh, so in this particular case, and, and this one, we'll look at very similar diagrams, but in ADS. So, so this is the difference between Witten diagrams and Feynman diagrams. You just draw a circle uh, around the, uh, one of them. That's the uh, 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 the basic difference. So this is uh, uh, so this is an ADS. Uh, this is the boundary of ADS, and uh, 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 so that's uh, so we look at uh, uh, these sample sort of uh, four-point functions uh, and. Uh, uh, and just uh, 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 see how you compute them and uh, 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 how they illustrate some of the general features uh, that we have seen uh, uh, so far. Okay, so let me just stop here. For